Hello everyone and welcome to Ships and Stuff here on the Gumpla Network. As always, I'm the Spicer and today we'll be trading the high seas of Zapang for the depths of space in Space Battleship Yamato. Or, I guess maybe I should say Space Battleship... If you made it through the Mirai episode and caught that teaser, congratulations. And now that I've used that Yamato clip twice, it's time to hear from today's sponsor. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Gunplay and Playmo here in North America. Whether you regularly restocked catalog, flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, and a private warehouse option, they've got you covered in every situation. When you're checking out that fast catalog that's restocked regularly, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA Network to save yourself 10% off. Perhaps one of the most iconic spaceships in the anime sci-fi world, the Yamato mixes traditional naval designs with futuristic alien tech. Hailing from the space battleship Yamato franchise, a franchise that's almost as old as Gundam, it's safe to say this iconic ship has seen a fair few variations. While most of these variations would share a similar silhouette and will mostly be focusing on the newer versions from Space Battleship Yamato 2199 and 2202, it's safe to say you're really not missing too much in most of these instances. Now, I will make the note as well, Space Battleship Yamato in some instances here in the West is also known as Star Blazers, so if you've seen Star Blazers, it's Space Battleship Yamato. If you've seen Space Battleship Yamato, it's Star Blazers. It's not as complex as the whole Macross Robotech thing, but it's kind of a similar idea, if you will. Now, being based on the designs of its World War II namesake, the Space Battleship Yamato is pretty unique in terms of design for going sci-fi aesthetics for the visual appeal of the classic battleship. Seeing as these ships look so similar and share a name, it's only fitting we compare them. The Space Battleship Yamato comes in at 333 meters long, featuring its distinctive three triple-barreled 48-centimeter positron shot cannons, its two triple-barreled 20-centimeter positron shot cannons, and of course, its imposing superstructure housing the main and combat bridges. The Yamato of the Imperial Japanese Navy comes in at 263 meters, featuring its three triple-barreled 46-centimeter Type 94 naval guns, its two triple-barreled 15.5-centimeter naval guns, and its imposing superstructure as well. While the Imperial Star Destroyer of Star Wars fame is inspired by the USS Texas, the Yamato's don a much more similar look, opting to update the design rather than be inspired by it. This is technically due to the original story of the ship being built in the remains of the original sunken Yamato wreckage. With the original story coming out in the mid-1970s, it kind of makes some sense. The wreckage of the Imperial Japanese Navy's Yamato wasn't found at that point. The wreckage wouldn't ultimately be found and confirmed until 1985, being split into several large chunks. That would leave the newer adaptation of the original 1970s story to adjust the concept a little bit. Instead of being built inside the wreckage of the ship, the ship was partially built underground while the portion above ground was disguised as the original ship's wreckage. Since the Gamelons destroyed all the Earth ocean, this wreckage would appear on the surface of the Earth, quote unquote, and would be seen from space by the Gamelons, but since it's a World War II wreckage and the ship looks pretty much identical, they were like, oh, whatever, it's the shipwreck. There's a lot of them scattered around. This would also make a little bit more sense, since the Space Battleship Yamato is 60 meters longer than the original Yamato. The silhouette is where the similarities end, though, as two and a half centuries of technological progress make the Cosmo Navy's Yamato not only a spacefaring battleship, but also a carrier. Instead of a small variety of seaplanes used for light reconnaissance like its Imperial Japanese Navy counterpart, the new Yamato would carry a complement of 36 Type 99 Cosmo Falcon fighter craft, two Type 0 Cosmo Zero fighters, and a whole host of auxiliary craft in its, its 2199 configuration. However, the ship would undergo a refit in 2202, swapping out the Type 99 Cosmo Falcons for the Type 1 Cosmo Tiger II fighters. This complement of fighters, along with a variety of anti-aircraft batteries and missiles, allowed the Yamato to traverse almost any combat situation, be it anti-ship or anti-spacecraft in nature. While the most standard armaments of the Yamato are impressive, it's the wave motion engine that truly sets the ship apart. 
This system would not only power the ship, but allow it to transverse much greater distances in a much shorter time. The ship could also use this energy as a shield and utilize the wave motion gun, an unparalleled weapon that would pretty much neutralize any foe in its way. All this would come from the alien world of Iskandar with the invitation to come retrieve the Verse Cosmo system, a device that would undo all the damage and radiation the Earth had sustained at the hand of the Gamelons, an imperialist alien race looking to conquer the known universe. The Yamato would come to be feared by any foe it came across, as well as revered by the remaining population of Earth. Of course, the series is more than just the adventures of the Yamato itself. She'd be little more than a hunk of steel without her crew. The first man to captain this legendary vessel would be Admiral Juzo Okita, a seasoned member of the United Nations Cosmo Navy. Admiral Okita would guide the Yamato through its initial journey to Iskandar. Susumu Kodai would head the tactical department leading many of the off-ship missions and holding the trigger of the wave motion gun. We also have Shiro Sanada heading up the science team, Daisuke Shima heading up the navigation role and being the helmsman, Yuki Mori being the radar operator, Sakazo Sato as the main medical officer, Saburo Kato heading up the fighter complement of the Yamato with Akira Yamamoto being one of the standout pilots. The Yamato would also see Kodai and Admiral Ryu Hijikata take up temporary command throughout its journeys. Currently, you can find the newer retellings over on Funimation. While 2199 and 2202 may end up migrating over to Crunchyroll at some point in the near future, both these subs and dubs are available on Funimation's website and streaming service currently. These series are well worth watching if you're into space, action adventures, or just these iconic designs. Much like with Zapang, I'll forego the whole summary and just tell you that if you're looking for something to watch, the adventures of the space battleship Yamato and crew don't disappoint. Be sure to catch my unboxing and review of the 2202 version of the Yamato in its 1/1000th scale model kit from Bandai. As always, friends, I've been the Spicer here for ships and stuff on the Gunpla Network. Please do your best to stay safe and keep on building.